You've seen their highs. You have seen their lows. Now see them for who they are as the front row seat brings you up close and personal with star athletes. On today's episode, Delvin Goh has made huge strides in his basketball journey through the years and is now one of the main men for both club and country. With the SEA Games and the ABL season coming up, he will look to take his game to an even higher level. So excited to have a Singapore slinger in the house, Delvin Goh. Welcome to the front row seat. And you've been a busy boy, you've been a busy bee. Looking forward to the new season, you actually went to Adelaide and trained with the 36ers. Now, they are a major team. How did that come about? Um, SG happens, you know, two years back, you know, my boss actually wanted to send me over. But then, um, because of my army, and then I, I couldn't go over. You know, at that point of time, I was thinking like, I missed out on this, you know, good opportunity for me. But um, this year, he told me that he was going to send me again. And then I was looking forward to it. I was damn excited. And, um, Going there is totally different, like, you know, the culture, everything, um, the the standard, you know, the level of basketball there is totally different because they are the top five leagues in the world and the Australian NBA is the top five leagues in the world. So um, by going there, you know, it's really eye-opener for me, you know, to be able to play with um, players that are playing um, in leagues that are so high level. Mm. And when I, when I go there, you know, I just want to learn as much as I can, you know, to come back, you know, to give feedback, to bring tips to look at the details, you know, in order to bring it back to the national team or even to the Slingers. Now, the Slingers are a professional organisation, mm -hmm. right? But how did it compare when you went to the Adelaide 36ers? Was it just something totally different? I mean, um, we were just playing basketball, but when you look at the speed and the intensity they are training and they play um, in their games, you can see that, you know, the level is really different. They are so much faster. They're so much more aggressive and you just have to be there to watch them to know that, you know, it's different. So when I come into Singapore, I just try to uh, motivate my guys, you know, try to inspire them and tell them what I see in Adelaide and then try to, you know, put in place some things for them so that, you know, they can work hard. Now you enjoy yourself mm -hmm. on the court, I'm sure. I think you enjoy yourself as well off the court, enjoying mm -hmm. the food that Adelaide had to offer. Like, mm -hmm. did you go crazy there? I mean, um, for first, it's definitely <laughs> barbecue. You know, barbecue is definitely one thing that, you know, I will, uh, I definitely like. And then um, fish and chips, you know, we are staying like five minutes away from the beach. So, okay. it's, you know, the fish and chip there is, you know, really fresh and all that. And um, and I cook sticks because in my house, I can't cook sticks because of religion issues. So, um, when I go over there, you know, I go crazy on sticks. And then I follow the Gordon Ramsay recipe and then try to cook stick on my own, you know, and then it tastes really good. So I would love to, you know, cook sticks again and again and again. What is the Gordon Ramsay recipe? What's the, what makes it different from normal way of making steak? For me, I think, you know, the normal way is just, you know, putting it into, you know, the pan yeah. and just pan fry and all that. But the Gordon Ramsay one is, you know, it comes down to the marinating, you know, come down to basing it yeah. at the end and then try to find the perfect temperature and all that. So um, if you ask me if I cook it, I think it will be dry and all that. But when I use the Gordon Ramsay's recipe, it's actually very tender and juicy. Okay. So it's totally different. So you guys can check it out. Is you going to invite us to your house one day for <laughs> some steak? <laughs> Not my house, but somewhere that somewhere I can else really up. cook steak. Maybe yeah, East Coast Park or whatever, uh, like, this guy can make steak. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, but you, you enjoy, like, it sounds like you, lo you love your steak, mm. but... When you go overseas, when you go on trips, mm -hmm. like these training trips or just as a holiday, yeah. do you miss local food as well? Oh, I mean, yeah, I do. Like, if I have five days of Western food, if I'm going to like somewhere, you know, with uh, um, Western food, I will definitely miss, still miss my chicken rice and all that. I yeah. still want to eat it. Because I'm the guy that, you know, you can't go full on on Western and then neglect my you yeah. know, local food and all that. So every time I go, I try to find a balance, but you know, sometimes when you go over to like, let's say Australia, you know, the fried rice can be, you know, a little bit expensive and all that, but I mean, we'll see, but I'll, I'll still try and order something else, yeah. you know, apart from, you know, just eating like Western food and all that. So. You love your mix of Asian mm -hmm. and Western. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing some research on you and yep. I was looking up where, where you've played before and mm -hmm. Brunei came out, mm -hmm. Beruang Blazers in Brunei, shout out to you guys. How did that happen? 
I was actually uh, coming off my sixth season in the ABL, and then uh, right before I enlist, actually uh, one of the Thailand team actually approaches me, but um, I was too afraid that you know my enlistment might come, mm. so I didn't agree to it. And then when I got my enlistment letter uh, in July, and then Brunei approached me, and then it was in August to September, and my enlistment date is in October. So it's just nice that I can you know just go there for a month to play, and then go enlist into army. So um, <clears throat> I guess they look for me. Um, after my ABL season, and then they think that I'm gonna be a perfect fit for their team. Yeah, and um, so they actually approached me, and then I joined them. So, is it something that you would like to do, perhaps in the future? I know Slingers are a great organization, mm -hmm. but would you like to expand your horizons, try Australia, try Europe at some point? I mean, um, thanks to Singapore Slingers, I mean you have a perfect basketball career here, and um, apart from that, um, for me, I think I just want to, you know. Um, reach out more. I just want to go overseas to play, trying to improve myself. And then when I go overseas to play, it's a big step for Singaporean player, and for the future generation, the younger kids that um, to give them like there's a career path not just in Singapore, but there's a chance for you to go overseas to play. And yeah. by me stepping out, it gives other countries um, the thinking that hey, actually Singaporean guys can play. So the next time when they look for import players, they might want to look at Singapore. So that's, that's a big step for me and I would love to do that. Trying to be an idol, trying to open doors for the rest yep. uh, <coughs> of the basketball players in Singapore. Speaking of idols, mm -hmm. who were some of your idols growing up? I think um, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, as, um, even though he's retired now, but um, the way that he, that he plays the game is very different. He's got, he has this calling called his, the Mamba mentality. Yeah. You know, he works really hard, not just on the court. like. He, he don't just wake up and then one day he just want to score 60. You know, it's all about the things that he do behind the scenes that's going to make him great. So um, I always look at his workout, you know, try to try to follow what he do and all that. Um, so Kobe Bryant, growing up. And you have a very interesting story of how you started with basketball because mm -hmm. that wasn't the first sport. No. I mean, I was in badminton and I was in track and field. And then one day I was in track and field. We have the sports day, you know, okay. in primary school. So. Um, What's your sport in track and field? Runner, 100 meter runner. 100 meter, you're meter a sprinter? Runner. Yeah, and four times 100, you know, relay okay. and all that. So that was what I, what I loved back then. And then um, my teacher in charge was there, the basketball teacher in charge was there. And then he saw that, hey, actually, I can run because I came in first. Yeah. So he saw that I can run and I got a height. I'm taller than all my peers. So he put me into basketball. Although I didn't like it at first, but slowly I pick it up and I never look back. How fast would you run 100 meters? Oh, I don't remember. Would you be a, a, a national sprinter <laughs> if it wasn't for basketball? Um, maybe, 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 maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how fast are they now, but yeah. Um, some big events coming up for you uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the year. The ABL mm -hmm. season starts yep. once again, mm -hmm. trying to get over the disappointment of the previous season. And of course, the SEA Games, Singapore mm -hmm. have not won gold in the SEA Games. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to the challenge? I mean, um, for now, I think our goal is for the national team is to go in, you know, to compete and try to have a medal, try to get a medal back for Singapore. And um, <coughs> championship is definitely one thing that we look into. But um, but for now, I think we really look at a medal finish, which is uh, really good for us. And um, preparation and all that, I can say that we are seventy percent there. So um, we're just gonna touch on certain things because there's new guys joining in. Mm. Because it's not like the previous years where. The players are around the same, but this year there's like three or four new guys that are joining us. So um, there's some things that we can teach them, the concepts of defense, offense, um, just gonna break down for them because they're still young. And um, we see from there. So with five weeks to go, we just try to touch on that and try to be at least 90 to 100% when we are in the SEA Games. As for the Slingers, I think um, because the Slingers and national team is a little bit clashing, you know, mm. like we have trainings back to back to back and keep going morning, night, morning, night. So, um, but the Slingers is definitely, you know, we train in a very high level and intensity with imports joining us. Because, yeah. And it's going to be different when you have imports and um, the way we play is different. We are faster and all that. So, um, but the Slingers will be ready when we are ready. So, there's no worries for the Slingers, but the national team, I think we're just going to keep working hard. Here's a trick question for you. Who do you pl uh, prefer playing for more? Singapore or the Slingers? I'm trying to get you in trouble here. 
for now, if you ask me, I would say the Slingers. Yeah. Um, I mean, the national team, with no import, you know, certain um, we can do pretty much a, a lot of things by ourselves. But um, why I choose the Slingers is that because the system and all that um, is slightly better and then uh, the competition is better because I get to play against imports. And, yeah. You know, we like the challenge, we like to be competitive. So I'm not saying that the national team got no competition, but it's just that um, if you ask me which one do I prefer, I would say I would definitely prefer a much co competitive one, which is the Slingers. I think it's just different between Singapore and, and the Slingers. Try to put him on the spot there. But that's not the end of it because on our next segment called Team Talk, your friends will try to put you on the spot. Stay tuned for that one. We're back on the front row seat with Singapore national team basketball player Delvin Go, of course, a slinger as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tried to trip you up right at the end there, mm -hmm. but just giving you a little taster because yep. in this segment it's called Team Talk and now we have your teammates with questions that they've always wanted mm -hmm. to ask you but perhaps didn't dare to in front of your face, but All now right, they right, can. Right, right, All right? right? So five questions, mm -hmm. let's have a look at the first one. Delvin, what inspired you to grow your beard? Strong one, right from the off. Loving Raj. What inspired me to grow my beard? I think um, most Singaporeans, I mean, especially the Chinese guys, I don't think they can grow beard. Okay. And uh, for me, it's because in the two years in my army, I have to shave almost every day. Yeah. So when I came out, I was just telling myself, I just gotta leave it there for two years just to pay back, you know, for that two years they have shaved. Yeah. So that's what I did. Um, but it's just really, I think, just want to be slightly different from everybody else, you know, rather than the clean shave ones. So I just gotta leave it there. How long does it take for you to? I know it looks like you you've done you you do some sculpting every day. Yeah, but I think if I shave everything and then I think it just take like maybe two to three weeks to for me to grow back. Oh. Okay. So it's really tough for me when I was in NS because <laughs> it's like too much, too much. I have to shave every day. Every time my sergeant would tell me to shave yeah. every day. So. I, know, I know how you feel. I was there as well. Um, <laughs> all right, second question. Okay, so something I want to ask Delvin is that uh, who is your biggest female uh, celebrity crush? I trip you up, huh? Your teammates, man. Oh my God. Celebrity crush. Um, so, okay, what kind of movies do you watch first? Movies, action movies and all that. But if you want to ask me, it's going to be Korean, oh. Korean K-pop. Okay. It's going to be K-pop, so I'm just going to pick one. Um, she's from Blackpink, I'm not sure if you guys I, know. I just knew you were going to say that. Yeah, it's Jenny. Okay. Jenny from Blackpink. I mean, Jenny she's, from Blackpink. She's really, you know, she got that, you know, she got the charms and oh, all the charm, that, yeah. you know, the way she sings and all that. So I'm just going to pick her. Pretty deep, man. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Okay, so Delvin, what's your favorite cheat meal? That's an easy one. Favorite cheat meal? Um, McDonald's, maybe. Like double McSpicy. Double McSpicy? Yeah, I don't always go for double McSpicy because, you know, every time I have double McSpicy, the next morning, my stomach so can't take it. So you pay the price, but, yeah, but you still go for it anyway. But I still go for it when I have to, when I want to, when I'm craving for it, I'll still go for it. But you're good with your diet in general? Um, it's just normal, average, you know, what everybody eats, but maybe it's just slightly more. But if you ask me a cheat meal, it, it must be McDonald's. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, next one. I realise that Delvin has a habit of biting his fingers nails, so I wonder if, if it's just because of his nervous, nervousness. He's all more nervous than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's all more nervous than me. Um, it's just a habit I had since I was young. Okay. And my mom used to tell me not to bite my fingernails, but you know, till now she like. Does she still right, tell just, you off? Just bite. Oh, just no, bite. She now doesn't. she doesn't tell me anything when I was biting my. But I think it's just a habit for me when I've got nothing to do. When I was sitting there. Okay. I would just bite my nails. So it's just it's out of just, boredom. Yeah, it's, it's not just, nerves. It's, it's not nerves. It's so when you're bored, nerves. you bite your nails. Yeah, when I got nothing to do, when I'm watching, let's say a movie, I'll bite yeah. my nails. When I'm doing nothing, like I'll bite my nails. So, have you been biting your nails on this show? Nope. All right, because you're not bored. I. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you're revealing a bit too much on the show. All right, I think we have one more. All right. 
So what's up, Darwin? Actually, my question to you is, have you ever wanted to play the role of a point guard or a forward, or because of your height, you've been forced to play the centre role? A very well, technical, mm, very technical that's a question. Nice question. That's something that I would like to talk about. I mean, like because in Singapore, like the culture is, if you're tall, if you're big, if you're fat, you gotta be a centre. Okay. Because in Singapore, there's not many people that can go to like two meters or yeah. even one night, one ninety. So for me, I started off as a centre and then slowly, like what I say, I look at my idol, which is Kobe Bryant. He's a small forward. He shoots a lot. You know, he do a lot of moves from the outside. So I actually tried to mirror him. And um, I've always wanted to play a point guard. Mm. And I always wanted to play a small forward, you know, slashing from the outside rather than just banging bodies in the inside. But I think recent years, I, I've been doing that and I'm not just the guy that's going to take the rebound and pass to my point guard and ask him to bring it up. So I'm, I'm the guy that take the rebound and I dribble on my own. So right now it's totally different and especially when the game is evolving, yeah. a lot of you know bigs are coming out to shoot the trees, you know driving from outside and all that. That's not really like a traditional big that's gonna bang bodies inside. So as the game evolves, I think we're gonna evolve. So that's a good question and I would definitely like to play the point out one day. Oh, Vignesh with a very mm -hmm. good question. All right, so they try to trip you up with uh, mm -hmm. the questions, but they also had some nice words to yep. say. Uh, about you in a testimonial, really? so I think you'll enjoy this one. Hey Dell, you have been an inspiration to me both off and on the court, you know. Uh, I've learned a lot of things from you. I hope we can play together for many more years. And all the best for your career. Uh, Delvin, it's been a, it's been a long ride. Uh, since, ever since we ended our Division 1, uh, Slingers has ended our training and then the national team has picked up too. So, uh, road to Sea Games, road to ABL season, uh, stay healthy and all the best for the upcoming season. Okay, Delvin, um, it's been a while watching you on TV and seeing how you progress. Uh, I wish you all the best in your future endeavours and uh, I hope you make it big in the region and beyond. So, I have known Delvin for five years, so throughout these five years, he has always been a great teammate to me. Whenever I have big, any bad games internationally, he will always be there and he will take the initi initiative to message me. Uh, to ask me how am I feeling and also he will always give me words, words of encouragement so I really appreciate that. So for the upcoming SEA Games, I really hope that we can really do our best and get a medal back for Singapore. This year has been a very pivotal year for us in terms of NBL accomplishments and everything and I hope that we bring that same uh, mentality to the SEA Games and for yourself, the future um, singer season. Do you enjoy that? That's really nice. Yeah? You know, that's really nice. It seems like you have a leadership role among the mm -hmm. teams. Is that something that, that you like to take on? Um, actually, I'm the guy that don't really talk as much as, you know, I'm the guy that I want them to grow on their own sometimes because um, I want to take the initiative, initiative to know that, you know, not every day there's going to be people that is going to help you. And um, I won't step in until I see that they really can't grow on their own. And um, some of the guys actually take it up pretty well and then they slowly grow and grow and grow. But I'll step in whenever I feel like um, I don't feel it the same way. Like I feel like I really need to talk to them, then I'll talk to them. Because I'm more like the, the guy that really want to keep everything to myself. But, um, but this year is different. Like I talk to them more than I usually do. I just want to, you know. Motivate, motivate them, especially after I come back for Adelaide, mm. you know, by seeing different level of basketball. It just, it just changed me also. And I try to, you know, speak up more, try to help all the other guys because I, I feel like, you know, they'll listen to me more than they'll listen to other people. So as much as my experience, I feel like um, they respect me and the things that I say, they take it, you know, to heart and which is really good, so yeah, it, it, it's really nice. It's really nice. Oh, inspiring words mm -hmm. by Delvin Go. But now it's time for fun and games in the next mm -hmm. segment called The Silent Treatment. Stay tuned for that. You're back on the front row seat. I have Delvin Go still with us and now it's time for the game segment. All it right. is The Silent Treatment. Three questions, mm -hmm. uh, three words to, to describe. Very Singaporean themed uh, as a location, mm -hmm. it's food, and it's a typical Singaporean slang, all right? So I think I will try and describe first, so mm -hmm. you need to put on the headphones. I got some music ready for you. Adjust it. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you can hold the phone and you play. Just play it and then see whether you can hear what I'm saying. Alright, so can you hear me? A little bit? Can you hear me now? No? Okay. So, first one, alright? Ka lang. Ka lang. You're supposed to say it, I don't know. Ka lang. Ka lang, guys! Alright, first one. Food. Alright, food. Soon. Chi kui. Sun kui. Sun. 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 Sui. Sun. Sui. Sun. Sun kui. Sun kui. Sun kui. Say it out. What, what am I saying? Sun. Sui. Sun. <laughs> <laughs> Sun Kue. Sun Kue. Am I saying it right? Sun Kue, right? Sun Kue. <laughs> Alright, never mind, forget it. Word. Okay? It's a word now. Singapore slang. Okay? Paise. Mati. Paise. Paise. Paise, Paise. Mati. Paise. 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 Pai? Pai. 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 Huh? Pai? Yeah, Pai Se. Pai Se. Yes! Alright, that's it. Sun Kue. Sun Kue. I see Alright. Okay. Oh, it was so, tough, it was tough. It was tough? It was tough. I've, I've uh, got word that they tried to trip me up, but in mm -hmm. the end, they mm -hmm. tried to trip you up. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yes. For mine. Alright. Can you hear me? I haven't, I haven't played yet. No. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Nope. Alright, let's go. Ang Mokyo. Ang. Ang. Mo. Ang Mokyo. Yeah. Easy. Was that food, right? Mm, yeah, food. Nasi. Na. Na. Thai. Na. Thai. Kai. Nasi. What did you say, Thai? Nasi. Kwachi. Kwachi. This is Kwachi. Padang. Prata. Pa. Pa. Roti prata. <laughs> pa. Pai. Pa. Pa. Dang. Dang. I don't I have no idea what you're saying. It looks like prata. <laughs> Nasi. <laughs> I have no idea. Go for the next one. The food one is the toughest. Kia. Kia. Yeah, su. Cartoon? That's su. 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 Kia. Su. Kia su. Yeah. Kia su. The food one is the one that food one. trips us up. Nasi padang. Hey, that is a. Man. Nasi padang. Nasi padang is tough, man. <laughs> uh, Davian, thanks so much for coming mm -hmm. on the show and being game enough to, yeah, to play yeah, yeah. the silent treatment. But before we go, mm -hmm. every guest, we ask mm -hmm. uh, for those basketball players who are coming up the ranks who want to be professional, mm -hmm. what would be words of advice that you'd give them? I would think it's, um, for me, it's just you know working hard, you know, because I believe in whatever the coaches give you um, during trade training. Mm -hmm and then um, you have to put in 100%. If you don't put in 100%, you're not going to benefit the most out of it. And it's not just during trainings. It's all about what you're going to do when nobody is looking. If the training you can give you 100% for two hours, why not one more hour by yourself? Mm. So that's what I'm going to give you know, to the future. 
future generations that's coming up for basketball in Singapore. So that's one of words. Fantastic having you on the show, man. Thanks for coming up Thanks, and good luck man. for the upcoming SEA Games. Uh, and now uh, we will see you next time. I'm going for some nasi padang <laughs> and he's going for some sun kueh. Yep.